Nirvana, mit diesem bescheidenen Roten Tag werden wir einen endgültigen Schluss machen. And it goes, gentlemen, in their frock coats, and those, and those back, back captains in the industry, and those, those bankers, and those, those politicians don't, don't like, like it. it. We, we can, can have to kick it. their, their backsides too. Tell you, son, apart from Hitler, Rome is worth a whole bunch of them put together. So, Herr Hoffmann, I think we may proceed. The child is to be christened Johannes Werner, is that correct? No, just Hans. Hans Werner. Sorry. I'm sure you appreciate that this is a solemn occasion, and nonetheless so because of the troubled times in which we now live. Stationmaster Albrecht Hoffmann, you, as a proud servant of the State Railroad, no less than your wife Gerda and your sons Karl and Helmut are gathered here today. Well, goodbye, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Why did you contradict the pastor? I didn't. I told him it was Hans and not your Hans. What's wrong with that? I noticed you didn't contradict him when he called you station master. What's that supposed to mean? Well, it obviously means that that promotion the railroad's been promising you all these years has finally been granted by God, or someone close to him. <laughs> if that's the kind of nonsense they teach you in university, you might just as well have stayed here and been unemployed like Carl. And if we're going to stand around here all night, we're going to freeze to death. Yeah. Why don't you folks go home? Carl and I are going for a drink, yeah, Carl? You bet. Bye, Hans. And don't forget, the man in there says you have a great future. And he should know. It's his profession. Does this mean you two are going to be out all night? No. Unless we get very lucky. Bye. Bye. Steinhagers, please. Where's Mitzi? She's in there somewhere. I'll tell her you're here. Hey, Walter, what, what kind of circus have you got back there tonight? A Nazi circus. Well, I thought you liked that kind. My brother does. He thinks they're the wave of the future. Yeah, well, come on. What happened at the meeting? Are you a member now or what? How long are you back for? Uh, just a weekend. I have to be back in Munich on Tuesday. Hello, Carl. <laughs> the last time I saw you was when Helmut took me to that football match, wasn't it? Yeah, the only game we lost all season. What are you doing here? I thought you were training to be a teacher. No, no, no. Mitzi has now decided to become a singer, which means that instead of just punishing children, she can punish everybody. Mm, that's always been the secret of Helmut's charm, the fact that he doesn't have any. You've noticed that too, huh? huh? Oh, where do you do your singing? Wherever they'll let me. Do you know that place just off the Bahnhofstrasse? I'm starting there next week. Uh, Fräulein Templer, are these fellows paying for your time or what? No, Uncle Walter, you are. That's what I thought. Will I see you tomorrow? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, incidentally, how's the new brother? Oh, he's fine. And we don't need any more jokes about good tunes on old violins, either. Don't be silly. I think it's marvelous. Oh, yeah, just what we need. Six million unemployed and a new baby. Uncle Walter, what's happened to the lousy beer? Do we have to wait forever for it? All right, Sunday. If you ordered it, it'll be there. Listen, you little poison dwarf. Why don't you go home before somebody steps on you? Hey, fellas, this dump's full of stinking socialists. Or commies. I don't know. All pigs smell the same to me. Come on, now buy a drink somewhere respectable. Hey, guess we don't have to pay for our drinks. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. I'm afraid we don't appear to have a table at the moment. Well, that's all right. We want the bar. This restaurant has no bar. Herr Meissner, would you be kind enough to ask that young man, his companion, to join me for a drink? Helmut, how are you? Sit down, sit down. Ah, this must be your brother Carl, of whom you always spoke so well. Oh, yes. Every time I tried to praise Helmut's academic talents, he would say, ah, no, Herr Professor, I would much rather be able to play football like my brother. And is that what you have now become? A footballer? Uh, not exactly, no. Ah, uh, what will you gentlemen have to drink? Ah, beer. Two beers, Herr Meister, please. Two beers, Herr Professor. So, how are you finding life at the university? Well, Munich's certainly an improvement on this place, but I don't know as things are. I sometimes wonder if being at the university isn't just a bit irrelevant. But in three years... Yes, in three years I can be an assistant professor, helping to prepare other students for jobs that don't exist. You don't believe in the acquisition of knowledge for its own sake? Not when we have six million unemployed roaming the streets, no. Yes, well, if you're looking for a practical solution, I... Uh... I must admit that uh, the academic life does have a certain uh, aspect of irrelevance. Uh, uh, how about you, now that you are no longer a footballer, what are you up to? Well, I'm an unemployed motor mechanic. I know. It, it's very difficult for young people today to know what to do. I must confess that I am rather happy that I'm no longer young myself. Speaking of solutions, Carl has been thinking of joining the Nazis. Do I take it you disapprove? Well, don't you? It's not the party I would have chosen for myself, but that can hardly deter Carl. You are his brother. I should think he'd find your opinion much more relevant. I just don't think they'll deliver what Carl seems to think they're promising. They may call themselves national socialists, but if they ever get to power, you can be sure you'll never see anything that even remotely resembles socialism. What makes you so sure of that? Oh, I don't doubt your stormtrooper friend Rome has dreams along those lines, but Hitler certainly doesn't, and never did. You so I'm afraid he may have a point there, but I can certainly understand why you would find their uh, promises, the new order in all this chaos, very appealing. You can? Oh, yes. But I must warn you, you may find the price for all this good order and discipline a rather high one. Well, I gather the Nazis have better soup kitchens than all the others, and these days that should be reason enough for joining them. Good to see you, Helmut. Thank you. Carl, good thank luck. You. Huh? Thank you very much. Wow. 
Why did you have to embarrass me like that for? Embarrass? Well, he's Jewish, isn't he? So what? Well, that you don't go asking people like that what they think about joining the Nazis. I don't see why not. Don't tell me you don't have the courage of your convictions. Look, if you're going to start apologizing for things you haven't even done yet, you may not be quite what the Nazis are looking for anyway. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, it may interest you to know that I'm not just thinking about joining them. I already did. I signed up this afternoon. You did? Oh, you cunning little devil. <laughs> well, that's fabulous. Now, if anybody gives me any trouble, I can just set my little brother the storm. Yeah, don't count on it. I get you out. I'm enough scrapes as it is. You drag me into, don't you mean? Oh, well, whatever. Listen, I don't like this dump. Let's go. Hitler? Hey, you! Just a minute. Yes, you. Didn't you hear me say Heil Hitler? That is not a greeting with which I am familiar. Is that right? Well, you soon will be. Maybe you should start practicing. Come on, then, Heil Hitler. Let's hear it. Don't I know you? Yes, of course I do. You're that Jew professor from the academy, aren't you? My name is Ludwig Rosenberg, and yes, I am... Don't you know better than to address a man from the SA without first removing your hat? Now, pick it up, and we'll start again, shall we? Why don't you do it yourself? Go on, then. Pick it up. in that kind of gesture if you decide to join the party. Well, thanks again. Right. Uh. <laughs> My brother, the stormtrooper, eh? Yeah? <laughs> you weren't exactly a spectator yourself. On the contrary, that's exactly what I was, and that's exactly what I'll be the next time you start something. Yeah. Don't forget it. Come on, let's go see if we can find anything open. Well, I can see you've got a great future with the Nazis. Huh? First day in the party, you start out by beating three of them up. <laughs> Too much for me. Have you tried the Schlenker yet? Great. It's about time you had a couple of decent scars to show. Well, don't you think they're just a little bit old-fashioned? Hell no. The girls love them. That's enough. Do I know you? What's your name? Hoffman. Helmut Hoffman. You could be good, but you're vulnerable. Be careful with that left arm. Without balance, you're always vulnerable. Are you at the university? What subject? Classics. You'd do better to take a serious interest in fencing. Just a minute. Yes? Be here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. We'll see if we can make anything of you. Who's that bizarre character? 
You don't know him? That's Reinhard Heydrich, personal assistant to Heinrich Himmler in the SS. Oh, yes, those people. Yes. They tell me if you ever need a friend, he'll sell you one. So why should you worry? If he wants to make a fencing master of you, who knows, maybe you'll end up at the Olympics. <laughs> Meanwhile, he may do better to drum up some votes for Uncle Adolf. I understand he may be needing them. <gasps> Stop it, Carl. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I just got a job, that's all. But you already had a job driving for those SA people. No, 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 that's just part-time. I don't get paid for it. This is for money. Oh. I'll be working as a mechanic down at the bus garage. Are you going to be in for supper tonight? No, no, I'm sorry. I have to have a meeting. Not another fight with us Red Front people. No, no, no. It's a proper election meeting. They say the Rome's going to be speaking. I don't like that man. He looks just like a pig. Huh? I'll tell him you said so. They can yours on down to Munich. Mm. No, I'm driving Beagler. He lives here. Oh, you're yeah, lucky. Lutz will be going down to Hanover. I'll probably be up all night. Here they come. Never mind, Beagler. I shall tell him that. Keep his SS clowns out of your way. Damn it, old man, they're only ever supposed to be the Fuhrer's personal bodyguard. Now they're ordering everybody about it, even me. You know what? There's hardly a real soldier amongst them. However, when Hitler becomes Chancellor, there'll be some radical changes in that department, too. Very radical. Your driver may be prettier than mine, but uh, doesn't seem to know much about motor cars. Yours doesn't look too bad, either. Maybe I'll borrow it one day. Halt, Hitler! Says he won't be back till Christmas. What are you drinking? Uh, nothing for me. You know the rules. All right, give me one of those. Creme de menthe. Yes, a creme de menthe. It's only coloured water, but they'll still charge you an arm and a leg for it. Oh, that's all right. I just got a job. Doing what? Beating up old ladies? Uh, no. No, that's just in my spare time. So what do you hear from Helmut? Well, not much. Only seem to hear from him when he wants something. Yes, I've noticed. Well, I liked your song. Only one? Well, I liked his kind. <laughs> what have you been up to in that lion tamer's outfit of yours? Well, we had an election meeting. We seem to be having elections every three months yeah, these days. this one could be important. Why is that? Your people planning a little push if they don't get enough of us? A little push? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. You better ask Hitler. He never talks to me about that kind of thing. Damn. Oh, hell, there's Steiner. I'm sorry, I'll have to go. He's the owner. 
wants me to meet someone who needs a singer for a place he's opening next year. Says it's something really exclusive. Mm -hmm. You just imagine, can't you? Thanks for coming by, and uh, say hello to Helmut, if you get a chance. I... Wake up, Carl. The foreman's watching you. What do you think? Is it gonna hold up? Well, what it needs is the crankshaft for grinding. Yeah. I can't see them forking out any money for that. Just make sure the bearings are all right, and then we'll uh, increase the oil pressure a bit. Right. Carl, listen. When I took you on, you said that you'd be willing to join the Union. That's right. Why? You never told me you were the Nazis. Well, you never asked. Oh, right. That's true enough. But don't you think it's a bit of a contradiction? I mean, being with the Nazis and, and wanting to join the Union? Well, I don't see why. We both want the same things. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Don't tell me you're one of those people who actually believes that the Nazi brand of socialism has got anything to do with the Brotherhood of Man or something. Why not? Because the fact is, if your friend Hitler ever got what he was after, there wouldn't be any trade unions, socialist or otherwise. That's nonsense. Hitler's not going to do anything to hurt the unions. I like you, Carl. What's more, you're a pretty good mechanic. But you don't know a damn thing about politics. Never mind. As it turns out, we won't have to fight about it now anyway, will we? Haven't you heard? Been on the radio all this morning. Heard what, for God's sake? The elections, you dummy. The Nazis lost two million votes and 34 seats in the Reichstag. 34? That's right. That's 34 Nazis will have to go and warm the backside somewhere else. <laughs> Improving, but not as much as you should. Tell me, have you had any more thoughts about coming to work with us? The SS or the party? The SS is the party, or very soon will be. Has anyone told that to Rome or his SA stormtroopers yet? Well, they're just the foot soldiers of the movement. Make no mistake, it's the SS that will be in control. Yes, but apart from anything else, I still have two years at the university left. Two years before you become what exactly? Some impoverished teacher of literature? Probably, yes. But frankly, I don't believe in the party's philosophy. You don't believe? Do you think I care what you believe? I want your intelligence, not your belief. You can forget about Teutonic Knights and Germanic destiny. Leave that to people like Himmler. I'm talking about an organization that's going to control not only the party, but every aspect of the state itself. Now tell me the truth. Wouldn't you like to be part of something like that? Well, well it sounds fine, but I mean, the party has yet to get to power, and judging by the last election results, that could be some time. And besides, I understand they're running short of funds. Is that a fact? Are you attending any lectures of vital importance tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Then I suggest you join me for a trip to the Ruhr. You're not lacking intelligence, Hoffman. You're lacking information. Von Schroeder controls the biggest bank in Cologne. The one on the right's Vogler, United Steel. The other one's Oetker. He manufactures baby food. 
Nice combination. That's Emil Kierdorf. He'll be celebrating his 85th birthday next week. That's if he makes it up the stairs. Meanwhile, he owns enough coal fields to keep Europe warm through the next ice age. Our Chancellor von Schleicher says Germany is on the road to recovery. Pity he won't be there to see it. Well, how long do you think his government can last? Two months, maybe three. And then? Why then, according to our revered constitution, President Hindenburg will confer the title of Chancellor on someone else and ask him to form a government. Yes, but who? Who indeed? Hindenburg will, of course, listen to these distinguished gentlemen. After all, they own the country. Why shouldn't they have a voice in running it? They're here to decide who's going to be the next Chancellor. They already know who's going to be the next Chancellor. It's simply the price they're haggling over. They think they're getting a lap dog for their money. A mongrel that can be house trained. But surely they'll be demanding some kind of price for their support. Obedient workers. Docile trade unions, plenty of profits. Nothing he wasn't planning to give them already. Of course they'll expect to hear a lot less inflammatory talk of a second revolution from Rome and his SA friends. In fact, they'll be expecting to hear a lot less from Rome altogether. Do you think that's too high a price to pay? Well, who needs revolutionaries when the revolution has already been achieved? Exactly. She understands it perfectly, don't you, Father? <laughs> what? Go on, go on. You should be wearing your comb. Why do you think I bought it for you? Here. Oh, no. This, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't do it like that. You have to undo it first. You give it to me. No, no, leave it. Oh, oh, it makes me look like a... Anyway, it's too expensive. Everything you bought, they're much too expensive. You must have used your whole allowance. Now, don't worry. I'm going to be earning some money. You won't have to support me anymore. You're not thinking of leaving the university. I already have. I turned in my books a week ago. But you're not going back? But you're still going to teach. You're still going to be a teacher, aren't you? No, but listen, I'll be earning more than I would after ten years as a teacher. Ten years? Are you going to be some director of a bank or something? All right, maybe not quite that much right away, but it'll certainly be more than I get from teaching, and I'll finally be doing something. Doing exactly what? I'm going to work for a man called Heydrich. He's in Munich, and he's setting up... Oh, Heydrich? You're talking about the SS? Yes. I thought you didn't believe in all that overheated Nazi philosophy. Well, of course not. It's primitive rubbish. But listen, all that ideological nonsense those lunatics keep spouting is neither here nor there. They'll probably be told to drop it when the party gets into power anyhow. What? Well, now you admit we're going to get into power. Sure, you'll win. But then you are going to be faced with actually running a highly complex modern state. And those crazy idealists like your friend, Rome, wouldn't even begin to know how. It'll take practical young professionals to run this country. Some, somebody with common sense. People like you, I suppose. That's right. People like me. Do you really believe all of that? But of course I do. Why shouldn't I? I don't know, Helmut. Sometimes I think you just believe whatever happens to be convenient for you at the moment. Oh, come on. Hey. Dear
honor of our new chancellor. Hitler? If I gave away free drinks every time we got a new chancellor, I would have been broke a long time ago. Yeah, sure, you can probably remember when Bismarck was chancellor. Yes, I can. And they didn't have songs to honor pimps then either. The horse vessel? What are you talking about? Horse Vessel was killed in a fight against the communists back in 30. I don't care if he was killed by a troop of performing monkeys. He was still a pimp then, all the same. So what if he was in his spare time? We've all got to make a living, haven't we? I don't see why. You have a real talent for making friends, don't you? Never mind, if he makes jokes like that in the future, you can probably have him shot. Anyway, it's time I picked up Mitzi from that glorified brothel. Did you ever look her up, like I told you? Yeah, just the once. She didn't seem very pleased with you. Why? Well, for one thing, she never seems to hear from you unless you're in town. Well, what's the point of hearing from me when I'm not in town? I don't know. You do take her a bit for granted, though, don't you? Oh, you think so, do you? Come on, girls are always getting upset about something. She'll be all right. Do you want to come with me? What for, to hold your hand? <laughs> well, cheer up. The Fuhrer says this thing will last for a thousand years. I'll see you tomorrow. afraid they'll lose you. <laughs> no, it's just a bit of nonsense. I suppose it's supposed to make us feel as if we really belong. What do you think will happen now? Well, like I told you, Hitler will wait for Hindenburg I to meant die. with us. Oh. If you're going to Berlin, I don't suppose you'll be back here that much. Well, maybe not. Not for a while. What would have happened if I'd been pregnant last year? But you weren't. But suppose I had been. Well, you seem more upset that you weren't pregnant. Hoffman is off on his travels again, eh? Hello. What are you doing here? I just came to say goodbye to Dr. Leibowitz. Well, he's leaving the country? No, no. Things haven't quite come to that yet. No, he's giving some lectures in Hamburg. Right. Wow. All the same, it certainly looks as though we're in for some bad times again, doesn't it? You mean the official attitude toward the Jews? I mean the official attitude towards everybody. Certainly can't imagine that the Jews will be singled out for preferential treatment. Well, I think you'll find that the anti-Semitic aspect of all this will blow over sooner than you think. Yes, that's what a surprising number of my Jewish friends keep saying. I wish I could share their optimism. So, um, you're off to Munich again, eh? Uh, Berlin. I've taken a job. I'm going to work for the security department of the SS. SS? You're leaving the university to enter the SS. But why, Helmut? Why you? Do you remember that piece from Goethe you used to quote at us? Something about making decisions. You must the hammer or the anvil be? That's it. That's the one. Well, I finally decided that people like us Hoffmans have been the anvil long enough. Maybe it's time we started doing some of the hammering. Yes. Mind you, if Goethe had spent much time in a blacksmith shop, he might have noticed that the hammer tends to wear out much sooner than the anvil. I'm sorry, I've disappointed you, haven't I? Just try to do your hammering with a little discretion, won't you, Helmut?
what's happening. Who the hell are you? What do you think's happening? We're celebrating May Day. Workers of the world unite. Hoffman, reporting from headquarters, transportation section. You're late. We have to send for another driver. I had to grab the Stangarden Fjord to Hanover last night. We just got back. Wait here. You in charge here? Yeah? That's right. Who are you? Rudolf Langner, branch secretary. This is in poverty. You have no right to be here without a warrant, you know. You've got it wrong, little man. As from today, this union is suspended. And this is government property. So go celebrate your Labour Day somewhere else. Or I'll take them. He needs an ambulance. think he can hear me. In fact, I think he's deaf. Are you deaf? Huh? I think you'd better leave. What's that? It's all right, Heinz. I know him. I'll take care of it. Poldy, why don't you get us a cab? Oh, we're gonna go someplace else and have a drink? Oh, God. <laughs> Shall we go? Yeah. You know what we did today? Why don't you tell us about it in the cab? I don't want to tell you about it. Because... Because I forget, that's why. <laughs> but I do think that we should have another drink. I certainly do think that. Yes, speaking. Who is it? Helmut. Who do you think? Well, how should I know? It isn't as if you called every day. Anyway, they simply said Berlin and announced the Obersturmfuhr as if it were a message from God. Oh, I see. Uh, well, our switchboard people tend to be a bit military in their manner. I suppose that's what they're paid for. Anyway, listen. I'm coming home this evening. We could have dinner. Oh, I see. The Obersturmfuhr is visiting the provinces, so I get to have dinner. Yes, all right. Listen, Carl's here. I think he wants to speak to you. Carl? What's he doing there? He got a bit drunk last night. I'll let him tell you about it himself. All right, put him on. Uh, isn't this uh, back my office anymore? No, two doors down. Thanks. And who are you? Hoffman, assistant to Heydrich. Another one. He's got so many special assistants, no one ever knows what they're all doing. Uh, nobody except Heydrich, you mean? Exactly. Come on. Carl, what have you been up to now? Never mind that. Now, listen, you're the one who's supposed to know everything. Who the hell ordered that action against the unions yesterday? Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this happens to be one of the times when I evidently don't know everything. I'll tell you what, I'll talk to you about it tonight. I'll give you a call when I get in. Okay, bye. 
I forgot to introduce myself. Becker. Attached to Set Dietrich's headquarters, Liebstandarte. Ah, one of the Fuhrer's personal bodyguards. Well, if I ever need anybody shot, I'll know who to come to, won't I? <laughs> Always happy to be of service. There you are. Where have you been? There's a Mrs. Lunder in the front room. She wants to talk to you. Here? Where have you been all night? She says that you were at some union office where her husband got hurt or something. Why didn't you tell me? Because I just got in. But what happened? What's it all about? Nothing. The union's been suspended. We took over the offices, that's all. But why? Why did you do that? Because it's full of Bolsheviks, that's why. Communists, if you like. Mr. Lunger is a communist? Well, how should I know what he is? Did she say anything about him? Did she say how he is? She doesn't know yet. Doctors say he's got a broken spine. Police came last night. They say it was an accident. I'm sure they're right. But the court said we should speak to you first. First? Before lodging a formal complaint. Against the SA? Against those members of the SA responsible for Mr. Langner's injuries. You saw what happened. You could be a witness. My husband always speaks very well of Carl. I'm sure he'd be the first to help us, if it were possible. Apparently not. I'll request my section leader's report. If there's something in it you ought to know, I'll tell you about it. That's presumably the same report the police based their opinion on, right? Carl, if you don't stop pursuing this thing, you're going to talk yourself straight into a concentration camp. Do me a favor, Mitzi. Tell him, will you? Tell him what? What I've just been trying to get into his thick head. I think he's trying to tell you that the business of throwing elderly trade unionists downstairs is too important a subject for discussion amongst the rank and file of the SA. And whose side are you on, anyway? Listen, as things stand, Lunger is still entitled to a pension. You start stirring things up, and they'll probably decide he doesn't even qualify for that. Your name will stink, and he'll starve. Is that what you want? Listen, it wasn't just some isolated little event, you know. It happened all over the country, and it was ordered by the party. Yeah, in that case, maybe it's high time we had the second revolution. There and isn't the going SA to be any the second revolution. And the sooner you realize it, the better for oh, you. Oh, yes, why is that? Because if Rome doesn't stop talking about taking over the army and antagonizing the entire establishment, there's going to be one hell of an explosion, and when the smoke clears, he'll have disappeared. You know, who's going to get rid of him? The SS? Rome has been Hitler's personal friend longer than any of them. Hitler doesn't have any personal friends. Well, come on, drink up. This place is too expensive for us to be wasting good wine. Do you remember the first night we were here? The night I told Rosenberg that you were thinking of joining the party? And was he amused? He wasn't offended, if that's what you mean. I suppose you know they kicked him out of his job last week. What? How do you know? Who told you? My landlady's cleaning woman works for what the hell does it matter who told me? You talk as if it was some kind of big surprise to you. All right, I'm sorry. It wasn't a surprise. I just thought he might have had the sense to retire before it happened. You'd have found that less embarrassing, would you? Get this way. I'll see you outside.
trust the Herr Sturmführer found everything satisfactory? It's Herr Obersturmführer to you. Oh, uh, why, yes, sir, of course, excuse me, Herr Obersturmführer. Yeah, well, he found it adequate. Look, you can keep the change. Anyone would think I kicked old Rosenberg out myself. Hey, Hitler! You really think your SS people can take on the SA? You really think your Rome is bulletproof? Yes, that's marvelous news. We'll be with you for breakfast. Come in. Ah, oh, Hoffman. You won't be getting much sleep tonight. You have to be in Munich by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? Tell me, is it still your opinion that the SA have become nothing more than the party's garbage collectors? So you think our Führer has neglected and betrayed his old comrades, do you? Don't you, sir? <laughs> I was beginning to often. I must confess, I was beginning to. But that's all going to change now. We're meeting with Hitler tomorrow, Röhm and all general officers of the SA. This time it'll be the army and those damn politicians that'll be dancing to our tune for a change. All right, Hoffman. I'll let you know where to pick me up. Just a minute. You know, you should be an officer by now. Probably would be if you weren't always so damn provocative. Yes, stand easy. This Langner business, for instance, demanding to see your section leader's report. Did you imagine that would do you any good? No, sir. I thought it might do Mr. Langner some good. And did it? All right. Never mind. the army finally believes that Rome is about to move against them? No, I don't think they really believe it, but I'm sure they'll be very happy to have been persuaded of it. And having been persuaded of this clear and present danger, will they tolerate whatever measures we may think necessary? Well, if they've already agreed to cooperate, presumably they'll tolerate anything that appears to be in their interest. Yes, that's what I think too. Tell me, Hoffman, is it your intellect or your relatively humble position that causes you to agree with me? Oh, on this occasion, perhaps both. Perhaps. You mean perhaps we ought to promote you in order to really find out? Oh, go on, get out! Stand by in your office. This could be a long night. Personal bodyguard. I thought he was in the Rhineland. Yeah. 
He's meeting with Rome with the rest of that SA scum in the morning. All of them? Yeah. At Rome's hotel on the lake. The entire leadership. Oh, um... Remember asking me about ever wanting anyone shot? Well, maybe now's the time if you've got anyone in mind. Thanks. If I happen to think of anyone, I'll send you a telegram. <laughs> I'm going to be stuck here all night. I'm going to need cigarettes. No, 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 no. I'll get them. If anyone wants me, I'll be about 20 minutes. Mitzi. Mitzi. Yes, I'm sorry. I was asleep. Listen, is Carl there? Here? Yeah, no. What are you talking about? Well, it has been known, hasn't it? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but he doesn't make a habit of staying here any more than you do. All right, all right, but listen, this is important. Have you seen him at all? Yes, I saw him this afternoon. He said he was going to Munich tomorrow. Driving Beagler? Yes, I suppose so. Why? See if you can find him. Don't call the neighbors. Tell him yourself. Tell him to report sick tomorrow. Do whatever he wants, but stay home. What's going on? What's happening? I can't talk now. Just tell him, and tell him to keep his mouth shut. I'll try and call tomorrow. What's your name? My name? What the devil do you mean, my name? 
and Gruppenführer Biegler. Get out. You're under arrest. Oh. Oh. Check him inside. What about him? Don't leave him there. Put him in with the others. Look, sir. Tell these people who I am. They know who you are. But I haven't done anything. What have I done? What have you done? What have you done? You're a traitor. All traitors. You're going to be shot. All of you shot. Yep. Good, now we can finally get moving. Inform your duty officers that all further instructions will now qualify as direct orders from the Fuhrer himself. Bring me Gildish. him personally, then report back to me. I shall need you again later. Highly. Klausner was involved with Rome, too? Not that I know of, no, but now we have the opportunity. We might just as well be thorough. Get me Keller and Heidman. You idiots learn to shoot. August Piegler, the Führer and Reich Chancellor has condemned you to death. Sentence to be carried out immediately. But, Dietrich, you're my friend. The Führer would never do this. I can't believe he would do this. Believe whatever you like. What about Rome? The Führer is a man of great sentiment. He may decide to pardon him. Ready! Load! Aim! Long live the Führer! Heil Hitler! Fire! Heil Hitler, indeed. Pure theatre, what? Pity we couldn't provide him with a better audience. speaking. I thought you were going to call me back. We haven't heard from Carl since he left for Munich. Someone says the SA has been disbanded or something. Do you know what's going on? Uh, no, I don't. But I'll certainly try and find out. Shall I call you later? No, don't call me. I'll call you at home. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. Well, he's probably decided to stay on in Munich and get good and drunk. Cheer up. Another 24 hours and our little house will be in splendid order. 
The situation in Munich has been resolved, has it? The Fuhrer is still vacillating about Rome, but the others have all been dealt with. No problem with the uh, rank and file? Were you expecting any? Well, they'll grumble a bit, but when it comes to the point, they'll do what they're told. Everything in order? Yes, sir. Good. Good. Uh, the Fuhrer has just got back from Munich. I'm on my way to the Chancellery now. Do you have any thoughts? Just the question of Rome, sir. Yes? Well, one naturally admires the Fuhrer's sense of loyalty, but I'm afraid the full support of the army won't be forthcoming unless Rome is properly disposed of. Yes, that's Goering's view, too. But I think the Fuhrer feels that losing Rome might upset the balance within the party. Well, then perhaps the Fuhrer should be reminded that the balance within the party is whatever the Fuhrer chooses to make it. As for Rome, well, as our young friend here once observed, who needs revolutionaries when the revolution has already been achieved? Did he now? Incidentally, if the Fuhrer were to be persuaded of the necessity of eliminating Rome, who would you suggest as a reliable person to make the arrangements? How about Eicher? Eicher? Camp Commandant at Dachau. Oh, yes, of course. What am I thinking of? I'm sorry, the last few days have been very trying. Eicher. Eicher. I am sorry, Herr Eicher, but as governor of this prison, I have to tell you that this really is most irregular. Irregular be damned. It's a direct order from the Fuhrer. Rome arrested and dismissed. You have forfeited your life. The Fuhrer will give you one more chance to draw your conclusions. You have ten minutes. Excuse me, but what am I to do about this prisoner? He does not appear in my report. What's the charge? That is the problem. He has not been charged. But I believe he struck an SS officer. Did he? Did he indeed? I'll let you know. What about that other prisoner? Well, why don't you send him to Eicher at Dachau? Maybe he can teach him some manners.
Hello, Hoffman. You fancy seeing the horse rattle, do you? So what time is your train back? 7.25. Won't they even tell you how long they're going to keep him there? I told you, they don't have specific sentences. It's what they're pleased to call re-education. You get out when they decide you're ready for it. But why can't I go and see him? That man you work for, Heidrich, he could get him out, couldn't he, if he really wanted to? I already told you I'll talk to him. It isn't exactly easy. It's Mitzi. She's picked up Hans at the kindergarten. It's really been a tremendous help to me. You don't seem to realize it's going to be bad enough telling Heydrich where Carl is. Never mind asking him to do something about it. I didn't know you'd be coming. I just took the day off to come and tell him about Carl. I have to go back in an hour or two. Would you like some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Isn't there anything you can do? I don't know why the both of you have to keep going on at me. I didn't put him there in the first place, did I? Peterson may be a degenerate, but he's got a good nose for food. Look at this. Genuine black bread straight from the officer's mess. Well, don't worry. I don't have to do any favors that you wouldn't approve of. All right, night's out! Wait a minute. There's a man dead here. We decide who's dead in this place. Bring him up or I'll call in the morning. I was wondering if I could um, raise the subject of your brother in Dachau. Surprise! you didn't bring up the matter sooner. Or did you perhaps suppose we might remain unaware of the situation? But the fact is, The I... fact is that my security people have already looked into it. They tell me that your brother is relatively harmless. Given the right direction, he could even be of some use to us. Unfortunately, a release from Dachau is solely at the discretion of the Commandant. Nevertheless... Nevertheless, what? Surely an official request from you. This office issues orders, not begging letters. Anyhow, I have no intention of having my personal requests on file with an ambitious dwarf like Eicher. Is that perfectly clear? Yes, sir. On the other hand, if it amuses you to see Eicher yourself, you can give him my regards if you like. I imagine he'll be interested to listen to what you have to say. I'm sure he's quite aware that his name is on our files as well. And if he should let you have him, make sure that your brother learns to behave himself, or you might find that you're running short of friends yourself. So, Reinhardt Tristan Eugene Heydrich sends his regards, eh? Funny. I always thought he didn't like me. So you think I'm being too sensitive, do you? So, Hoffman. We haven't really had time to get acquainted, have we? Never mind. Perhaps you'll come back and see us again, eh? Sign this. What is it? It confirms that you've been well treated and that you won't discuss this place with anyone after your release.
это. Back to Berlin. I just came by to let Carl know that I spoke to the people from the garage. It seems we have some influence there. We? All right, the SS, if you prefer. Anyway, they say he can start there again next week. Do you think that's what he wants? What else can he do? I don't know, but you might have asked him first. You don't understand. They're going to be watching him now. If he doesn't settle down and stay out of trouble, they could send him straight back to Dachau. They? Who's they, Helmut? You mean your people, don't you? You mean the SS? Look, I don't like some of the things that have been happening any more than you do. But the only way you're going to change anything is from the inside. You're not going to change anything from the inside. On the contrary, they're changing you. Where do you think Carl would be now, if it weren't for my position in Berlin? One day you'll wake up and find out you're no different from the rest of them. And meanwhile, you won't have changed a thing. Oh, really? And how is it you know so much about it? Have you added political science to your other accomplishments? No. I just know because I used to be in love with you. You don't have to worry about Carl making any trouble. I don't know what they did to him in that place, but he won't even speak to anyone. All he wants to do is play with Hans. Well, anyway, tell him about the job. Helmut, um, good luck. May I come in? Yes, of course, of course. Come in. By all means, I... Welcome. I know it's not quite up to the standard of my old villa at the Landstrasse, but as you probably know, your people, I mean, <laughs> the, uh, the authorities decided that it was too good for me, and so they confiscated it. I'm told that they're going to auction off the contents in order to pay for their uh, expenses. Yes, I know. I managed to buy back a few of your books. Most of the best stuff had already gone, I'm afraid. But, uh, uh, yeah. Elective affinities. I wonder what Goethe would have to say now. Well, anyway, I just thought you might like to have them. Bless you. You're very kind to think of it, very kind indeed. I'm most grateful. The, the, the fact is, I only really seem to feel like reading newspapers these days, uh, even your uh, National Socialist one. Well, I suppose I should. Oh, uh, may I offer you a cup of coffee? I've become very good at making coffee. No, I, I really must go. Well, uh, thank you for the visit. It's Always good to see old friends. Well, why don't you just... I mean, have you thought of emigrating? Where would I go? I don't know. England, America. What would I do there? Teach, of course. 
I'm afraid the study of German literature is not going to be a very popular pursuit in the near future. Don't you agree? Besides, it's rather late in life to learn a new language. Anyway, I'm much too German. I would probably get homesick. Secretary of the German Embassy there, who was shot two days ago by the Jewish student Grunspan, is still hanging in the balance. Reich's Minister Dr. Joseph Goebbels said today... Helmut! Oh, why didn't you tell me you were coming? Is anything wrong? No, no, no. I just got a couple of days leave. Would you rather I stayed in Berlin? Hello, Hans. You've been promoted. How do you know that? Can't you see? He's right, though I didn't have to do anything very clever for it. It happens sooner or later, anyway. Can I see your gun? No, not now. Oh, go on. Let me see it. Hans, if you want to go to your meeting, it's time to go and wash your face. In a minute. No, now. So, what's been happening? You tell me. You're the one who always hears everything first. Well, how's Carl? Goes to work and comes home. He never talks, never tells anyone what he's thinking. Well, at least he managed to stay out of trouble. Did you hear the radio today? About our man at the embassy, yes. And that poisoned dwarf, Goebbels, is playing it up for all it's worth, isn't he? Do you think there'll be trouble? Well, I don't know. But if I had any Jewish friends, I'd certainly advise them to stay home for the next few days. Hans can't wait to join the Hitler Youth. Ah. Well, you won't like that, will you? I don't know. Perhaps it'll be better than him being unhappy because all of his friends are in it and he isn't. Have you seen anything of Missy? What, nothing at all? She's got a job working at a club in Munich, you know. Oh, yes, yeah, so they tell me. Well, come on, Carl. There must be some news even in this hole. <laughs> Rudolf Langner finally died yesterday. If you think that qualifies as news. Who's Rudolf Langner? He was the foreman at the bus garage. The chap in the wheelchair? Yeah. What was the matter with him? He had a broken back. Having a broken back isn't good for you. This time of night? Yes. Concerning the death of Rudolf Langner. Of what address? Bachmannstrasse 27. Langner? Bachmannstrasse? Isn't that the fellow who used to work at the bus garage? Didn't he just die a couple of days ago? Yes. Of injuries caused by members of the SA in May 1933. Just a minute now. What's your name? Hoffman. Carl Hoffman. That's it, yes. Hoffman. What are you talking about? That case was closed years ago. My statement's going to reopen it. Now listen, son. I already know your name. But I can just as easily forget it. I've learned to forget a lot of things these last few years. But why don't you do the same and go on home? I just want you to take my statement. 
Any statements I take here go straight to the Gestapo. They won't like your story. They won't like you either. Do you really want to end up in Dachau? Schumacher! Come here and witness the statement. see each other anyway. I don't know. March? That's right. Just after we went into Austria, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a funny thing, you know. Germany gets bigger all the time, and yet the world itself seems to get smaller. Is that a thought of your own, or are you quoting from a book I should have read? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. from a friend in Stuttgart this morning, uh, Fritz Ritter. Maybe you know him. Ritter? He's with the Gestapo, isn't he? Well, as far as Stuttgart's concerned, you could say he is a Gestapo. Anyway, uh, guess who's being interrogated right there in his office? Your brother, Carl. Bit of a character, your brother, isn't he? What's he supposed to have done now? He didn't know. Well, he's been making rather nasty allegations about something that was supposed to have happened way back in 33. To tell you the truth, I, I think Fritz would just soon drop the whole thing, but, um, I mean, after all, what's the point of sending young Carl back to Dachau? Trouble is, um, Fritz has got a bit of a problem there. Well, surely he's free to do whatever he wants. Yes, of course, but that's not the problem. No, his problem is uh, rather similar to yours. Uh, what you might call a family matter. See, Fritz has this brother-in-law who wants to join the SS, and I, I think he'd be a real asset. But the point is, he can't produce that Aryan family tree they make so much fuss about. At least, not one that goes right back to 1800. It's not his fault, of course, but uh, there are some distinctly non-Aryan skeletons in this particular cupboard, which makes membership of the SS quite out of the question. And you want me to talk to Heydrich about it? No, 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 that wouldn't be a good idea at all. No, but um, on the other hand, uh, you do have access to uh, Heidelbrand's department, don't you? I mean, they deal in those genealogical certificates. I bet you could get Fritz a really nice one, couldn't you? Let me think about it. Oh, I, uh, I told Fritz I'd call him right back. Well, it could save a lot of wear and tear on your brother, too. It's going to take time. Oh, I'm sure Fritz can wait for a week or two. Uh, Stuttgart, double seven, double one, please. <laughs> Hello, Fritz. Becky here. Listen, um, that problem you were telling me about. Yes. Yeah, I've just talked to him. It's all settled. Yeah. So now you can just, uh, drop that Hoffman thing, can't you? Oh, I see. It's already on your books. Well, listen, um, he must be just about due for military service round now, anyway. Yeah, right, well, why don't you just give him to the army a little early? Exactly. Why deprive the country of another soldier? Who knows? We may be needing people like that before long. Fine. Thanks, Fritz. You know, 
If you and I really cooperate, there's probably no end to what we could achieve. sing the Polish national anthem. Anyone know it? Do you know it? Well, no matter. It'll be obsolete by Christmas anyway. <laughs> like the Jews. Good night. Where have you been? What happened to you? Uh, you know. I know. I called Helmut in Berlin after Gerda told me you've been arrested. Is it awful? Well, it's better than Dachau. Oh, sit down. How long are you here for? Do you want a drink? Ah, sure. I'll have a beer, please. Well, we're just outside of town. I have to be back in barracks tomorrow night. Brandy? Putsi. This is Carl, a friend from Stuttgart. Hello. Now, we really know there's going to be a war. There's an idiot from the Armed Services Entertainment Department over there. Next thing we know, we'll all be in the war, so. Making jokes about the Polish Navy. Did he offer you a job? No. What do the Nazis want me for? They have enough clowns of their own. I'll hit them. Thanks. That's what I heard you saying. Oh, yes? What did you think? You know what I think. Oh, why don't you two nauseating lovebirds go home? Go to bed, do it for the fatherland. <laughs> Leave me to adjust my maquillage in peace. I'll go and get my coat. Good night, Putsi. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Good night. And Hitler? Tell me, Hoffman, have you been doing anything reprehensible recently? Not that I'm aware of. Well, if you had, you'd certainly be aware of it, wouldn't you? But our people in Berlin persist in having doubts about you. They seem to feel you lack a certain dedication. This is just your manner. All the same, it's best to keep it in mind. Poland. Take a good look. 
In a few days, it will have ceased to exist. The Fuhrer has already given the final orders. However, in the interests of world opinion, it will be a good thing if the Poles are shown to be guilty of extreme provocation. We have, therefore, arranged for a number of incidents. Uh, there in Glywitz, for instance. On the night before the outbreak of war, our radio station will be attacked and captured by a detachment of Poles. They will broadcast some inflammatory propaganda and then retreat back again across the border. Or so at least it will appear. I take it these marauding Poles will in fact be people of our own. 150 SS officers in Polish uniform and are too capable of broadcasting in Polish, of course. Hmm. 150? Isn't there a danger that some of them will eventually talk? No, none at all. Now, in order for these incidents to have credibility, these poles of ours must suffer a few casualties. That's where you come in. Providing suitable bodies is Gestapo Muller's responsibility. However, Muller tends to be a bit crude. I don't want the entire area littered with a bunch of dead clowns. I want corpses that look like Polish soldiers. You will therefore select seven suitable candidates and deliver them to Muller. Where would this selection take place? You're familiar with Dachau, aren't you? Beg to report. Prisoners ready for inspection. Sir. Them. This is just to keep the goods on ice, so to speak, until we get them to Glavitz. We'll provide them with some convincing bullet holes when the show opens. Tells me the tanks are rolling. Have you heard anything? Oh, by the way, Fritz sends his regards. Fritz Witter. I'll get started, my friend. It's Ludgard. His brother in law has just been accepted to the officer school in Braunschweig. Congratulations, Hoffman. I've just heard from Muller. He said that the goods that you delivered are just the thing. I notice here, though, that you selected only one political prisoner. All the rest were from the habitual criminal category. Is that some kind of indication of your political sympathy? Or is it simply that you think that criminals make much likelier looking poles? I've been listening to the ever-popular...
Later in the program, we shall be playing you some selections from... Excuse me. Later in the program, we... Przerywamy ten program, żeby podać następujące wiadomości. Odpowiadając na stałe prowokacje armii niemieckiej i władz cywilnych, polskie siły... Z... to Warsaw, Poland must pay dearly for her continual and unprovoked aggression against Germany, which culminated in the cowardly attack on our radio station in Gleiwitz shortly before the outbreak of hostilities. In countless towns and villages, our boys are greeted as welcome liberators from the Polish regime that has consistently persecuted the German-speaking population. Are those Strachenbach's people? Yes, his section has been extremely thorough. Is he submitting reliable figures? Yes, admirably so. We estimate that of all the so-called upper classes in Poland, only 3% remain to be dealt with. the boots from Schroeder's yet. No, I didn't. Schroeder's closed. They took him away. What do you mean they took him away? He's not Jewish, is he? Well, don't look at me. I have nothing to do with what happens here in Stuttgart. And anyway, if you're talking about the Schroeder I remember, the one that used to be a socialist, I guess he just couldn't keep his mouth shut. The old fool should know better. Do you really believe that? Believe? I don't believe anything. What has it to do with belief? Nothing. I'm talking about reality. God in heaven, you're talking about one silly old man. If you had any idea what they are doing to tens of thousands of people. I don't really believe that. Why don't you? Why don't I what? Well, go on. Why don't I what? 
resign. Hmm? You don't understand anything. Nothing. If you're writing to Carl, you better give it to me. I can get it to him, Monica. She keeps thinking Carl will be coming home soon. But from the way our traffic's moving east, the railroad people reckon we'll be starting on the Russians any day now. What do you think? What? Yes, probably. Who knows? Back, eh? <laughs> I don't know how you do it. But you manage to fiddle more leave than anyone in the SS. So tell me, what illicit pleasures have you been pursuing this time, eh? Well, speaking of pleasures, has Himmler sent for you yet? No. Yeah. What for? Well, naturally, he's reassigning a lot of Heydrich's assistants. Do you mean to say you didn't know? You see, that's what happens when you spend all your time on leave. You don't even know what's happening in your own department. What? Heydrich's leaving for Prague. He's just been made Reich's Protector of Bohemia. Nice title, eh? It's very grand. What does it mean? Well, I suppose it means the Czechs are going to get a good kicking. And if Heydrich isn't taking you with him, you better hope him has a job for you. Or you'll find yourself fighting Russians. Heydrich seems to think quite well of you. In fact, you could almost describe him as your guardian angel. We shall obviously have to find something worthy of your talents. Very good. I'll let you know. By the way, this brother of yours, has he been behaving himself? I take it he must have been, sir. I believe they've made him an officer. wonderful surprise for you. We bring you, at enormous expense, all the way from Hollywood, California, America's darling, Shirley Temple. Oh, I'm so sorry. Last Monday, the Fuhrer declared war on America. <laughs> so Shirley can't come. It wasn't Monday. It was Tuesday. <laughs> but we have our own darling from Berlin, the wonderful Mitzi Templar. When I am old.
Are you expecting someone else? telling you to go home to bed this time, is it? What a perfect time for me to go sightseeing. I'm told this village is an absolute gem of Soviet architecture. Better hurry. The truck will be here for us at midnight. So, Hoffman, you've lost your guardian angel, eh? This is Griffin Fuhrer, Dr. Bess, currently attached to the Foreign Office. He's interested in the measures taken concerning the murder of Reinhard Heydrich. I shall be appointing you to keep him informed. Yes, sir. What is the situation at present? It, it's a matter that hasn't previously been my department, sir. Nevertheless, it is now. And I presume you have at least kept yourself informed. As I understand it, some 10,000 persons have been arrested and a further 1,200 executed. In addition, the village of Lilitze, in which the assassins were believed to have taken refuge, has been liquidated. And the inhabitants? It was the inhabitants I was referring to, sir. Don't you close that door. The bombers will be here soon enough without you showing them the way. What's that freight doing on siding five? Eastbound, rerouted from Frankfurt. But Hanover have commandeered the loco. There's no way we get it shifted before daylight. But there are people in there, aren't there? Yes, I know. Jews from Holland. Look, don't worry about it. Where they're going, they're in no hurry. See you in the morning. You hope. Hoffman speaking. Signal box here. If you're still waiting for your boy, the Berlin train's just pulling in now. About time to. Uh, listen. Uh, do you know anything about that freight on siding five? Yes, it's ready to roll as soon as the Berlin train clears the line. Good. Will they fix the tracks? All but the down line from Frankfurt. They're working on it now. It's been quite a night, eh? Hasn't it just? Uh, 
Thanks, sir. You took your time. The way you people are running the trains, it's a wonder I'm here at all. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> My relief will be heading back. You want to wait? We can walk down to the house together. Fine, I'll get some coffee. The damn train took 12 hours. I'll see you in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me where they're going to send me? Don't worry, you'll like it. Next. Jewish, what took them so long getting round to you? No system is quite perfect, I suppose. Rosenberg, eh? Professor Rosenberg, you told my brother, Gerhard. Gerhard Dickler. Oh, yes, Gerhard. Very intelligent boy. He was killed at Smolensk. Sorry. So now you're reporting for resettlement? Don't you know what resettlement means? Yes. You're ill. Unfit to travel. Go home. Disappear. If anybody asks you, show them this. Take it. Well, the calls at Stalingrad. In spite of the enemy's suicidal attempts to recapture this beleaguered city, the iron will of the German soldier in the streets of Stalingrad is once again justifying our Führer's unshakable faith in the unswerving loyalty of his people. those people? Partisans. Partisans? Well, why don't you ask them?
Hmm. So you're one of the boys who's been so splendidly trying to relieve our people in uh, Stalingrad, eh? Yes. What I can't understand is why they should detach you from your regiment at the present time and post you to us. Would it be because of your political opinions? I think it probably has more to do with the fact that my regiment no longer exists. Hmm. Let's hope you find your time with us more profitable. I'll see you in the mess later. We make quite a tradition out of celebrating New Year's Eve. suggest we observe a minute of silence to honor those comrades that have fallen. Just a moment, sir. We're doing this all wrong. If you remember, sir, you're supposed to change uniforms with the nearest officer in the mess. <laughs> Mustn't break with tradition. is about to request a minute of silence for all of our comrades that have fallen in battle this last year. That's a good idea, very good. But, as you know, our Fuhrer, the greatest general of all time, has been kind enough to take over the conduct of this war himself. And if his performance at Stalingrad is anything to go by, perhaps we should add a couple of minutes for the poor idiots to be slaughtered next year as well. Shut up. Shut up. I'm serious. That's three minutes of our time. <laughs> three minutes. Just think if we were being asked to observe a minute for all the people that we've slaughtered and our friends in the SS have slaughtered. But <laughs> we'd spend the rest of our lives in total silence. man transferred to a punishment battalion. Yes, sir, but I don't think that's altogether justified. And I want it done by morning! Ago, they're happy to leave you for dead. These days, something like this practically qualifies you as A1. They're sending me back to the front. It's your own fault. You should have cut it off. I won't be seeing me again in a hurry. Yeah, don't be so sure. They'll probably prop you up in a tank.
truth. They won't be seeing me again in a hurry either. Herman Goering said, if the British ever bomb Berlin, you can call me Meyer. Make way for the degenerate, please. Well, Hitler. I don't know where you find your nerve. Doesn't take much nerve to play the fool. Being a messenger boy, that takes nerve. Otto wants me to carry an envelope to his underground friends in Potsdam. Here's to comedy and all its practitioners. And who might they be? Heil Hitler. Don't look now, but I think we're being ignored. How do you do? I have just heard that Carl has not returned to his unit. Do you think he's hurt? No, the damn fool is deserted. I don't know where the hell he thinks he can go, but if he should get in touch with you, turn for God's sake to steer clear of Berlin. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Why wasn't I introduced? Oh, she's just a family friend from Stuttgart. Not your type at all. And who's the old fairy with her? He's a comedian. Quite funny. But they tell me his jokes tend to be a bit political. Oh, he's harmless. Just likes to sail a bit close to the wind. Greet me as if you're expecting somebody else. A6. What does it matter? You don't have to go anywhere anyway, do you? <sighs> no, not today, anyway. I gotta keep moving. It's the only way to survive. But how can you live? <laughs> That's not the problem. I even have ration documents to feed an army. I have travel documents to transport one. But Helmut says they're looking for you. Uh, they've been doing that for nearly a year. You're surprised how much of this godforsaken country I've seen in the last few months. 
But if you're listed as a deserter and they get you... Uh, military police can only discover that if they hold you long enough to check back with somebody else. Otherwise, if your papers are good, if you don't let your face get too familiar, then they believe you're in transit because your papers say so. Anyhow, let's eat. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Fraulein Templer. Frau Leber, yes, what is it? Is it important? I'm just getting dressed. No, no, I'm sorry. I was just listening to the radio. They say there's going to be an important announcement. I thought you might want to listen. Oh, yes, thank you. I'll do that. We now bring you an important announcement from the Reich's Minister of Information, Dr. Joseph Goebbels. Men and women of Germany, shortly before noon today, Thursday the 20th of July, a group of despicable traitors made an attempt on the life of our Führer Adolf Hitler by placing an explosive device in his frontline headquarters. The chief perpetrator of this treacherous act, the Count Stauffenberg, then flew to Berlin in the belief that the Führer was dead and that he and his fellow conspirators could take over the government. I can now tell you that because of what I can only describe as divine interference, you idiot! Why now? Why today? Well, I wanted it to be sooner, but the trains aren't running on time anymore. Do you know what's happening out there? I can imagine. They're arresting everyone on sight. It's going to be the night of the long knives all over again. Do you have any travel papers? I'm supposed to be in transit to Munich. Then that's where you better go. Now. No. I want him to stay here. He can't. They've already arrested your comedian friend. That's impossible. But he's got nothing to do with all this. It makes no difference. He's on the list. They'll get the name of every soul he's ever known. That means they'll be coming here. You better sleep somewhere else tonight, both of you. Trouble is, every time you're right, Helmut, everything gets worse. But you wouldn't tell them anything. He wouldn't talk. Everybody talks. How can you say you don't know any names? You know your name, don't you? All right, let's start again. Your name is Putzi. My name is Gerhard. This gentleman's name is Becker, and this man is Hoffman. Now, let's see what other names we remember, shall we? Or perhaps you'd prefer to tell us some more jokes. Why don't you see what you can do? I'm afraid our friend just retired from the entertainment business. Maybe he just didn't know any more jokes. They're not here anymore. They were in there, both of them. What about the boy? Boy? Oh, 
no, he wasn't there then. Hans went to Berlin long before that. Berlin? The Volkssturm took him. The Volkssturm? You know, the new defense force they've sent. Oh, yes, yes, I know. Are you sure he said Berlin? Yes. Hans told me so himself. Said he was going to defend Berlin to the last round or something. I think there were some brothers, too. Hoffman, I understand someone is looking for me. Are you sure? What the hell are you doing here? You, you must be that, out of your mind. Did you know that Hans was in the Volkssturm? That he's here in Berlin? Yes, he's in the barracks of Don. I haven't quite seen six, him yet. How much? He's 13 years old. Do you think I don't know that? Some of the boys out there are even younger. What the hell can you do? You can get him out! You can get him out and you can get him the hell out of Berlin. You can bring my friend the Hopstrom for a large schnapps. And how, Carl? How do you imagine that I can possibly You're an get SS Hans officer? Out. That's how. You can have people shot, tortured, beaten to death, but you can't make a 13-year-old boy disappear. I've never done those things. I've no, never... nor have I. We've had other people doing it for us. Now you're going to get Hans out yourself. Look, those kids will probably never even leave the barracks. And anyway, how much longer can all this last? You've been saying that for 12 years. Don't worry, Carl, it won't last. What did you say when they crippled Langer? What did you say when your people murdered the last of the opposition? Don't worry, Carl, it can't last. I'm going to change things from the inside, right? It's probably what you told Rosenberg, isn't it? Don't worry, Professor. Nothing lasts forever. Well, we were wrong, Helmut. And they're all dead. All of them. And we might as well be, too. And it is going to last forever. All right, Carl. I'll go and get him. I don't know what good it'll do, but if that's what you want, Does he know about his parents yet? An air raid. Two weeks ago. Both of them. said to me today, enjoy the war. The peace is going to be terrible. Did you see Mitzi? Is she all right? She should have left Berlin long ago. And she had some weird idea that she wanted to stay where you'd be able to find her again. I'll meet you there, both of you, you and Hans. All right. But for God's sake, be careful. Those lunatics out there are shooting deserters on sight. You better let me go first. Listen, I only have a few minutes. You see that corner over there? Do you think you can get away to meet me there after dark? I don't know. They say we're going to the front tonight. Yes, I know. That's why I want to get you out of here. You want me to run away? No, no. Now listen, you'll be coming with me. We can go home. Don't you want to go home? 
But I can't. I'm a soldier. We're going to defend Berlin. The honor of our people. Shut up, you idiot. What are you, a parrot? I'm sorry, Hans, but it's all gone. There is nothing left to defend. You're going to desert too, aren't you? Will you stop talking about deserting? Don't you understand anything? It's all over. You'll be getting killed for nothing. You pig! I hate you! You're a traitor, just like Carl. You're all traitors. All right, Hans. Leave it now. We'll go home. We'll go home together. Give me my rifle. Go on back to your friends. Yeah. I'm sorry. It seems we taught our little brother too well. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps this thing really does last forever. Are you ready for me? No. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, well, they say the Imperial Guard is supposed to die with the Emperor, isn't it? Though I think you'll find my service will just crawl back into the woodwork. You'd be surprised how many new identity papers will be showing up. And every one beyond reproach. You say hello to Mitzi for me, yeah? papers. Don't I know you? <laughs> 